Just to prove that what I keep saying, that Reconstruction is still alive, look at the front page of the New York Times today and this decision of the Supreme Court yesterday based on the 14th Amendment, the, uh, uh, the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, in which the court, six to two, with one recusing herself, um, up, basically upheld the right of the voters of Michigan to insert in their state constitution a ban on um, taking race into account in admissions in public universities. I'm trying to make this as precise as possible. A constitutional amendment was approved by the voters of Michigan banning affirmative action in university admissions in Michigan on the basis of race. It was challenged on the ground that it violated the Equal Protection Clause by erecting a higher barrier to non-whites to get into universities than other groups. The Supreme Court upheld the right of Michigan voters to do this. It, it raised, I mean, I'm not going to go into this in great detail, but it raises all sorts of important constitutional issues. Putting the affirmative action question aside, it raises the question, which goes back to Madison and the Bill of Rights, what are the powers of a majority in a democracy to define the rights of a minority? You know, the majority can do anything they want in a democracy, but there need to be limits. The majority can't just declare that everyone who's in the minority is, you know, has to be deprived of basic rights. That's why we have a Bill of Rights. The majority can vote to deny you a trial by jury, but no, they're not, they can't do that. There are certain things which are beyond majoritarian voting, right? Certain things that apply to everybody, even if the majority wants to take them away. So that's part of the balance in democracy. But in this case, the court said, no, this is correct. Now, uh, uh, Sotomayor, Justice Sotomayor, issued a very uh, strongly worded um, uh, dissent in which she asked, and uh, good, you said, why do the voters, and this is where history comes into it. What interests me is not the legal thing as much as a citizen it does, but the history. Why do the voters of Michigan single out race as the one criteria that cannot be considered in admissions? Gender is not barred. You can have affirmative action on the basis of gender, as far as I can see in that law. There's nothing. Class is not barred. You can give special attention to people who come from poorer families as opposed to wealthier ones. Legacy is not barred. In other words, you can give special attention to people whose parents went to the University of Michigan. Athletic ability is not barred. You can let people in because they're good basketball players or soccer players or something. Musical talent, you can, can take uh, the ability to play the bassoon into account. Otherwise, how are you going to have a university band, you know? So, you, so it, in other words, there are numerous considerations that are allowed to be taken into account in admitting people to college, as here. We got a band. We got to have bassoon players and other things, I guess. Um, but race is the one now that is not allowed to be considered. And then the question, why is that? Uh, now, the dissenters, Sotomayor, will say, well, that is because there still is a residue of the old desire to maintain rights, uh, particularly for the white majority. The majority in this case said, no, 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 it's because we want to bar discrimination on the basis of race. This is the old, the, what you hear in the majority opinion is a faint echo of Andrew Johnson. They don't know that. Roberts does not know he's echoing Andrew Johnson, I assume. But there's a faint echo of Andrew Johnson in there, that this has never been done for white people, therefore it cannot be done for anybody else, um, and, which is a perfectly logical abstract argument, but it has nothing to do with actual history. And of course, actual history is the reason why race is singled out. If you were a man or a woman from Mars coming down and just looking at this, well, why do they single out race as opposed to anything else? Well, it's history that has determined that. So I'm not going to say, you know, there, there are arguments on all sides here, but it's worth looking at this decision because it, it's just another step in the long history of interpreting the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. What is equal protection? What is a denial of equal protection? They differ very profoundly on that. All right. End of today, let's go back to Reconstruction. This is a very famous illustration for a cover of Harper's Weekly called The First Vote. This is 1867, The First Vote. You have four black men lined up 
to cast votes in the South for the first time. What's interesting about this image is, one, they're all portrayed in a dignified fashion. They're all standing there online, ready to vote. They're not animals, they're not out of control, they're not crazy, they're, not, they're, they're ready to vote. It's not the image we saw in Birth of a Nation, remember? And also, uh, Nast has, the, the artist has, given you a kind of little snapshot of the political black community. The first guy has tools in his pocket. He's an artisan, he's a craftsman, he's carrying his tools with him. The second one, well-dressed, is like your urban free black. He's got a fine hat, suit, he's, you know, he's a little different than everybody else. The third one is a soldier, right? He's in his military uniform. And the fourth one, you can barely see, looks like a guy off the farm. He's, he's wearing more ordinary kind of clothes. He, he kind of appears to be a rural type. But you've got your four types of black men here voting in a dignified way in the first democratic election ever held in the South. That is the first election democratic beyond the boundary of, um, of race. Um, so this is, a, this, is, this is what's happening in the South in 1867 and 68. And they are voting for delegates to constitutional conventions. Under the Reconstruction Act, every southern state, as we saw, had to adopt a new state constitution and then have it ratified by the electorate. These new constitutions were largely based on northern state constitutions at that time. They, they obviously got rid of, well, slavery was no longer an issue. None of them placed any restriction on the right to vote for black men. A few of them tried to limit the right to vote of certain groups of ex-Confederates. As I mentioned last time, the push for that came not from African Americans, but from these upcountry white Republicans, scalawags, who were bitterly you know, opposed to the Confederates and the, what had happened in the war. Um, but those disenfranchisements quickly uh, fell out of, uh, pr uh, out of practice. Uh, they democratized state government in the South, in most states. They varied from state to state. In most Southern states before the Civil War, many local offices were appointed by the governor or the legislature. The most undemocratic, as you know, was South Carolina, where virtually every office was appointed by the legislature. Now these local offices are elective, which means that in the black belt, African Americans will be the dominant group. In the upcountry white areas, they will be able to choose their own officials without the centralized legislature imposing them on them. They all eliminated any kind of property qualification for voting or tax-paying qualification for voting. Uh, they passed new bills of rights which affirmed, you know, the, the equality before the law, civil liberty, religious liberty. Um, they were forward-looking in many ways. They reduced the number of capital offenses, that is, uh, crimes that could lead to your execution, uh, could be punished by execution. Um, and... Um, in other words, they were not radical, really. They just brought Southern law and up, up to sort of date with what had been happening in the North for 50 years. They were not all that different in many ways from the Ohio Constitution of 1803, for example, uh, although the Ohio Constitution had a, a limited voting only to white men, and that's not the case here. 